So I made big fan of Super Monkey Ball, and when I saw similarities in Marble It Up Ultra, I was excited to get hands on, and it hasn't disappointed. There is a wealth of content here to keep you busy. My name's Alex, and this is Switch Corner, and if you enjoy this video, consider subscribing, it helps us out a huge amount. So Marble It Up was released back in 2018 on the Switch, and it's a game I missed, so I was happy to jump into this follow-up. Now it is... An update on that game, an expansion I guess, and fans will be happy to know if you own that first game. This is completely free and respect for that five years have passed since that original and that is a long time in the video game landscape to kind of turn up and drop something free of cost. For new players like me it's going to be $30 or your regional equivalent but there is more than enough content to justify that price in my opinion. So when it comes to the gameplay, we get three core modes when we first jump in. that single player, weekly challenge, and a multiplayer. And I'll add here, multiplayer does support crossplay. Now the controls, they remain the same across all the modes. We move our marble with the left stick while positioning the camera with the right. We can jump with B and we can use a power up with a Y. Power ups include things such as speed boost, the ability to grow in size, and an option to float and that's just a few examples. In multiplayer then it also introduces a recharging shockwave mechanic that pushes opponents and obstacles near to you away and that's going to be implemented with the A button. And like Monkey Ball where you move the world here we directly control the marble but it's the level design where it gets truly creative. The center of gravity shifts, jumps are introduced, obstacles are here to push you away and there's different challenges as well are designed to keep it fresh such as collecting up gems before you can head to the goal. We also have medals to attain that's simply completing the level within a required time frame which is displayed on the world select menu and the only real feedback I would give is I wish we could add more modifiers in story mode to have flexibility over these challenges but it's really a tailored collection of over 100 levels which includes six worlds and four bonus worlds. Why not let us add, you know, different things for different challenges such as the gravity pull maybe or the amount of power-ups you will find as you progress. The difficulty can be a little all over the place as well with noticeable spikes but I think they generally do a good job. In particular the first world, it's all training but it quickly gets you up to speed with the controls and it never feels too basic it doesn't feel like i guess a waste of stages in that world design as well of those levels it's generally good fun expect moving platforms blocks ready to knock you out bouncing floors ice canyons and downhill high speed scenarios your only goal is to really get to the end and hit the marker and that will suck you in and it's relatively generous which is appreciated Outside of the single player then we do get weekly challenges, these are collections of 5 levels with modifiers in place, this is what I would have liked to have seen in single player. This week's challenge though it is gravity at 200% making jumps particularly difficult and when you do go downhill it feels incredibly fast. It is a fun system though to add a new element of challenge and each and every week fans can return for more. It seems as well that the game has its fans because when I jumped into the multiplayer they were populated I was able to find players seemed to mostly be Xbox players during my time but this was pre-release for Ultra so they are still clearly sticking around years later which is always a great thing to see. Also during a single player you will find global leaderboards that are completely populated. Modes then for multiplayer I wouldn't call all original but they absolutely work for the gameplay style. We have gem collecting, a zombie mode where you must hit other players and turn them to your side. There is soccer, which I guess is a weak version of Rocket League, but it's still a ton of fun. Also a popular option when I was online. And there's a mode called Sumo as well. It's basically a game of pushing others out, mixed with King of the Hill as you move from location to location. Now the way these lobbies work as well, if you complete a game as a group, you will vote on what comes next. So outside of that then expect a healthy amount of unlocks these are scattered through the levels often in of course hard to reach areas and you'll be changing up the look of your marble as well as the trail behind you. It's a simple thing but with multiplayer being a component here it's definitely nice to have some flexibility with your luck and there's a huge amount of them to unlock as well. Very few problems honestly, it sets out and delivers exactly what it intends to. I'd say there's a few difficulty spikes here and there that can prove frustrating and just occasionally feels like there's maybe a few cheap tricks like a drop on a blind spot turn but even this it's helped out by a huge number of checkpoints found throughout each level. 
I would have loved more customization for single player, give me some modifiers, you know, another reason to keep me coming back because once I've overcome the 100 levels, sure, chasing medals is nice, but messing with the formula definitely would have improved that longevity. The weekly challenges, however, do in part achieve this, and I do intend to keep on checking them out. Visually then, I like this one a lot. It's not incredibly detailed, but it delivers a crisp style that looks great on the hardware, especially if you have the OLED system, and the colors in this world just generally pop. Each world has its own kind of unique ideas and color scheme, and while the marble mechanics are, you know, basic, there's some nice little animations as it bounces and reacts to the world. Power-ups were highlighted two bold symbols hidden in the world, and if I did miss one, it was never based on if I spattered it, rather did I have the skill to reach it. The main menu is solid as well, making it easy to jump into the action quickly, but if I had one complaint to the single player world selection, it's a little busy in my opinion and it doesn't do a great job of explaining what everything is. You will of course pick it up, but it's more a case of you'll work it out eventually. Finally, for the visuals, if cosmetics are your thing, this game has you covered and it runs buttery smooth, or at least that was my experience the whole time I was hands-on. I didn't have a single stutter with this one, and it can be incredibly fast. Not a huge amount of audio to talk to, we get a few very basic sound effects as we navigate the world, but the highlight is the music. It is a synth soundtrack, for the most part at least, and there's some really catchy tunes in here. I don't think it's winning any awards, but it's fun, and sometimes that is all you need, and it's particularly welcome in a game that can get frustrating when you find a level that has you, you know, falling off the edge on more than a few occasions. Marble It Up Ultra then is a great package and for fans of experiences like Super Monkey Ball, this one absolutely comes recommended. There's a nice selection of over 100 levels to overcome and when you're done with that you can get to chasing those different medals and cosmetics. Outside of that though, you do get as well weekly challenges and it appears there's an audience still jumping in online and playing across the multiplayer modes where they demonstrate some really good ideas. Now, while I don't think this experience is particularly original, I think it delivers in all of the areas it aimed to, and my only big request would have been the ability to add modifiers for the single player content, because yes, there are over 100 levels, as I've mentioned a few times, but they are also extremely short, for the most part, less than one minute each. The price point for that reason of $30 may be a little bit too much for some out there, but I actually do think they justify it. Today, it's a good 7 out of 10 from me. I've seen all of these ideas before, but I think they deliver in a way that kept me entertained, and now I do intend to return for those weekly challenges. So will you be checking this one out then? Let me know in the comments. With that, hit subscribe, join us here for reviews, deals, news, and lists daily, and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks, everyone. Oh,